So it has been recently rumored. Now I say rumored because nothing is absolutely confirmed. And the way Marvel does it is they like to keep things secret. But it has been rumored that Michael Keaton has agreed to join the cast of the new Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man Up, uh, Homecoming. I almost said Spider-Man Upcoming. <laughs> it's Upcoming Spider-Man. <laughs> but yeah, Spider-Man Homecoming. And the rumors are that he will be joining the cast as one of the villains. Now, we have heard from Kevin Feige in the past that the up Homecoming villain will not be a villain that we've seen in previous Spider-Man movies, which we have five previous ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the Spider-Man movies we have. Um, and so it makes me think, Number one, is, is Michael Keaton going to be a good addition to the cast? Number two, what villain is he going to play? So let's jump into speculation, everybody. And let's just start with which, or will Michael Keaton be good in this role? Now, Michael Keaton, everybody knows him from one of the best superhero movies of all time. And, well, really, one the first good superhero movie, I could tell you. And then Brendan's going to say, well, Batman from the 60s was better. Whatever. We're not going to get into that discussion here. There was also Adam was the Batman original Superman on his own. Huh? The first I didn't and like the second. Uh, I mean, they I'm eventually got really bad. Yeah, but by the fourth true. one, it was like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. What are you doing? But but so Batman, the first Tim, the Tim Burton one, Michael Keaton did play the role of Bruce Wayne, a.k.a. Batman, in those movies. And that was, in my mind, one of the most successful. And you're right, Superman does predate it, and it was pretty successful for a while. But I think Superman is a garbage character, so we're just going to go ahead and throw his movies out of way and say this was the first, in my mind, good superhero movie that we ever got. Now, the funny thing about this is you would think that Michael Keaton would really look back and have love for the role because, you know what, he was already a star before that, but it made him millions and millions of dollars, I'm sure. So who can't who wouldn't love something that makes them millions and millions of dollars? Well, apparently Michael Keaton doesn't love it. He, I remember hearing a couple of interviews where he said he hates talking to fanboys about the Batman role. He never watches the movies. He actually doesn't watch any superhero movies. He doesn't really like the genre. And he almost did as much when you, if you ever saw Birdman, where he is a washed up actor that played a superhero and the superhero kind of comes back. It's a really weird movie. I didn't really like it very much, but, but, and it's almost like, oh yeah, you ruined my career talking to the Birdman character. So it almost feels like he feels like that was the downward spiral of his career. Cause I don't believe Michael Keaton did anything as big as Batman after, after that, which he had been known to be in a lot of movies in the eighties. So number one, why is he doing this money? Money. Yeah. Marvel's pretty good. If you're a big name actor, they, they do things like with uh, Robert Downey Jr. He gets a cut of some of the proceeds of the films. I believe for Avengers number one, he made $90 million for that movie. <laughs> so number one, Keaton can stand to make a lot of money because the Spider-Man franchise has shown that it'll make money. Doesn't matter who's making it. Even when we got in for the Spider-Man three or the Spider-Man amazing Spider-Man two, which were just hot garbage movies that it just felt like they were recycling used plots over and over and over, but they did it anyway. And you know what? Both those movies, I want to say, made well over $200 million, which is a smashing success in almost anybody's terms. And they probably made upwards of three, four, five hundred million dollars $500 each. So that's probably why he's doing it. Am I going to hate on Keaton for not liking the Batman role? Probably not. I mean, I would love it if I was him, but I can understand. He probably felt like he was typecast for a while or something. Couldn't get any other good roles, serious roles, because he played a superhero. I don't personally believe that, but maybe that's what he felt. So maybe that's so, okay. what the industry was like at the time, though. Because remember, that was before superhero True. movies were big, were a big deal. Yeah, it's before well Marvel started putting their stamp on everything and saying, "Okay, we can have these superhero movies that are have great acting, that have depth, that have a lot of these things that most people thought superhero movies were void of." So, uh, yeah, that's very possible too. Maybe the genres changed so much that now he feels like he can be respected as a, a better actor and still give a great acting performance but yet still be a superhero type movie. So, okay. You know what? I, I think we're, you know, split with this. I mean, not split, but just doesn't really make a difference. Cool, Michael Keaton's in it. He's a good actor. Hopefully he does a good job. Don't really care if he likes it or not. <laughs> so, sorry, Michael Keaton. Don't really care. Um, he signed and, on. He had his choice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You signed on. You're, you're making millions of dollars. Right, whatever. But to the more meat and potatoes of this I want to talk about which Spider-Man villain we're going to see play. Uh, now, Kevin Feige 
came out months and months and months ago, I think right after they first got the Spider-Man rights and said, hey, when we start doing our solo Spider-Man films, number one, we're not going to reboot it. You're not going to have to see a whole origin story again. Thank God. Yeah, just thank you. Thank you, Kevin Feige. Number two is the villain will not be a villain that we've previously seen in other Spider-Man movies. So I made a little bit of a list uh, of who I think will be in or who's already been in these movies. So we can go ahead and start cutting out some of these. Now, of course, you have the Green Goblin and Hobgoblin, both father and son iterations of this are already used uh, in the first set of Spider-Man movies. And even in the second Amazing Spider-Man, Green Goblin, I think, makes an appearance in there. Um, and so we're not going to see a goblin. Lizard was the main foe of the first Amazing Spider-Man, so we're not going to see him anymore. We had Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2, so okay, no Dr. Octopus. Venom was in Spider-Man 3, so no Venom. Sandman, which was a horrible, horrible iteration of Sandman, nonetheless, will not. He was in Spider-Man 3 as well, so not going to see him. We had Sh the Shocker, played by uh, Jamie Foxx, which horribly played by Jamie Foxx, might I add, um, for Amazing Spider-Man 2, so he's out. I did have one question mark on one of the other villains, uh, Rhino. We saw Rhino for about uh, maybe about 40 seconds to a minute, played by Paul Giamatti, which was a really weird cameo. Uh, but at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and say this disqualifies him as one of the villains as well. So Rhino's not that a really big villain anyway, I don't think. No, like, he's you not, he's really a make stupid sidekick that you, they just point him at people and he destroys things. That's really all you get. So who is left to be played in this world? Now, I don't know how it's going to go with Sony still having half the rights to the Spider-Man stuff. Are they going to let them take anything they want from this? Or are they going to keep some things to themselves? Because we did hear about the Sinister Six movie. We did hear about the Spider-Gwen movie. And we did hear about a Venom movie possibly being made. Doesn't look as likely now that Marvel's kind of taking the helm on a lot of these things. But does that disqualify those villains from being in this movie? For the sake of argument, I'm going to say no. If they haven't already appeared, it's, it's not going to disqualify them. Uh, then we also have villains like the Vulture. Now, the Vulture is probably the most speculated villain to be played in this new movie by Michael Keaton, just because I believe at the end of Spider-Man 3, there was a little bit of a hint here and there that the Vulture might be out there, might be doing stuff to become out there. And I do remember Sam Raimi, Raimi saying that when he does this Spider-Man 4, <laughs> when, uh, he didn't do it, that's why it's funny. But uh, when he does Spider-Man 4, which didn't happen, uh, he wanted Vulture to be the main villain. So that was speculated for the original Spider-Man trilogy. And then when at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 2, again, Vulture was kind of hinted at possibly being in the background. So this is a, a villain that's been twice hinted at and not used. And out of the rogues gallery Spider-Man <laughs> Spider has left, I'd say he's probably the most likely of all the villains especially with the way they're trying to ground um, just the way Marvel cinematic universe tries to ground most of their stuff. It's not all supernatural abilities. Uh, it's a lot of, you know, Iron Man is a lot of tech and they did introduce that Iron Man and Spider-Man would be working on tech together. At least, you know, Iron Man gave him a suit. He really likes the web shooters. So we'll probably see something that, so it would make sense if the villain is also somebody who rises up after making technology for himself. If you don't know about the Vulture, I believe what he does is he made the suit where he can fly around and shoot things, but it also helps him steal people's, um, like, souls. Maybe Scorp not souls, but life essence. Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say Scorpion, too, had a bunch of tech going on and was kind of a creative. Scorpion. That is yeah. a solid one that we have not seen yet in the, the Marvel Universe. Uh, the only other one other than Scorp well, Scorpion, I didn't even think of him, but you're right, that's a really good one, Vulture. I was also thinking about Mysterio. He could be an interesting villain because he mm -hmm. uses a lot of holograms and stuff like that and kind of you know transports you into places where you don't think you are and it's really all fake, but he uses it to his advantage. So Mysterio could be a good one as well. I think for the terms of this movie, it would be more likely that we're going to see Vulture. But now that you mentioned Scorpion, I could almost see a Vulture Scorpion team up going on. Like they both are evil, they both are mad scientists, and they built their suits together. And now they're going on a rampage to do whatever evil villains like to do. You know, just yeah. kill everybody. And I, and I would say too, the villain that would be most interesting to see would, of course, be Carnage. Just always. Yeah, but I think if you're not going to have Venom, you can't just introduce Carnage. There's that. Well, I mean, they said that they were they're 
they're not doing an intro story so you can just make some assumptions of things already happened but even so i think one of the drawbacks for for scorpion and for carnage and i don't know about vulture um is just the situation where we're talking about Keaton playing, and Keaton's an older guy, so someone it has to be a villain that fits an older character, mm-hmm. um, which Carnage definitely does not. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he, and I don't think be, Chameleon be really fits an older character either. No. Um, but but who would fit an older character? Kingpin? I don't see Keaton doing Kingpin. Well, and that was actually one of the ones I originally thought of was Kingpin, but the way they did the the MCU and how the TV shows are still technically part of the MCU, if they were going to do Kingpin, they would bring the Kingpin from Daredevil, the TV show. And I don't think they're going to do that. I don't, I don't believe they have any plans to cross those groups over because a lot of people want it, but Marvel keeps saying, no, nah, no, nah, we're not really planning on crossing those over. Yeah, they kind of hint at each other here and there, but we're not really planning on merging the two universes. That's why I, I can't see Kingpin doing it. But it, Vincent D'Alfonio would probably be a very good Kingpin, especially for this, and it, it would it, it could really work well. But I think they want to go a little more spectacular yeah. for the movies, and the Mysterio, the Vultures, the Scorpions would be a little more spectacular than just Kingpin wants. Yeah. Uh, and so, well, my uh, more serious vote is one that's a villain that's less known, but one of the better Spider-Man villains. And it actually comes from. One of the few Spider-Man comics I have right here, which happens to be coming, coming home. home. Hmm. Yeah, it's uh, I forget the the exact name of the guy, but it he's similar in certain ways to uh, to Vulture in that he kind of steals um, life as or what you described a Vulture, but he's he's not. He's the natural predator of Spider-Man and other animal-based people. Is it oh. like, oh, yeah, and they did a huge thing with this. I can't, some with an M. You'd skip through it a little bit, but if, if I remember correctly, it's like, uh, if you, yeah, man hunt there, there was something. a huge Spider-Man event that happened right before Secret Wars where almost all the Spider-Mans across the universes came together because they were being hunted. And, uh, the, yeah, this person who hunts these animal-based superheroes, uh, like they were trying to kill a Spider-Man. I can't remember what, but it was a really cool event. I'm yeah. trying to remember what he's the supposed to called. be. Uh, essentially, a very old. Uh, he's like a vampire. Yeah, he's like a very old am- vampire kind of, except for he specifically goes after spider totems. Not even not spider, but totem people in a cycle, mm-hmm. and he happens to get to the point where okay, apparently spider is one of the the totems, but he also has like some kind of bird totem and various other ones, and he mm-hmm. goes. That these people apparently just show up throughout history, and he goes and he kills them and sucks out their essence so that he can continue on, uh, strong and alive. And he's a really interesting one because he's not a villain that's trying to do a lot of destruction over the world or anything. He's fine with leaving people alone or destroying things, but all he cares about is getting Spider Man specifically here. So it's not Spider Man trying to protect other people. He is a little bit because the guy will use manipulate things to use uh, Spider-Man's desire to protect other people against them. But primarily, he's just going after Spider-Man, um, and he's not even malicious about it. That, that's one of the things I loved about it. He's not malicious, or he doesn't hate him. He tells him like, "Oh, I like you." At one point, because Spider-Man's cracking his his jokes, whatever. But he's just going to keep going after him because that's what he does. It's he's just the natural predator of Spider-Man, and. And he's, like I said, he's been around forever, so you could see an older guy doing it, especially since he's trying to become young again um, by taking Spider-Man. So you have kind of a good setup for an older-looking character that is now super powerful, um, super interesting, a good match against um, Spider-Man. And it'd be something that they haven't really uh, dealt with not even have they not dealt with this particular villain, but they haven't dealt with this type of villain in any of the Spider-Man movies or most of the movies, uh, superhero movies yet. Might be a little ambitious, but I, I think that would be um, a good one for, to bring Michael Keaton in for, really. Um, that could be very <clears throat> pretty interesting, that's for sure. But yeah, I'm trying to remember his name. It's something with an M. If I remember correctly. Yeah, if I flip through this enough, I'll, I'll see it. But yeah, they don't and really they had a huge Spider-Man event, like I was saying, that brought all the Spider-Mans across universes together to kind of, 
you know, prevent these this group of people. But you're right, that would be another cool one. So there's lots of really cool places that this movie can go. And with Marvel at the helm, I'm pretty sure they'll get there. So hit us up, let us know what you think. Which villain would you like to see as the main Spider-Man villain for Spider-Man Homecoming? Comments down below, of course, at Wits My Face on Twitter, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us.